So as before, we'll um, gather together around the silent practice. <coughs> and just to um, you know, it's again. encouragement as you've been sensing such a range of experience I'd imagine some of it very familiar poignant uh, personal and so on a lot of the intimacy of that a lot of feeling involved with it a lot of possibility of getting stimulated and concerned or excited or disappointed and trying to just uh, most depersonalize it doesn't mean it's not valid and valuable but stepping back this is as if this is just the human chitta doing what it does this is a karmic field karmic processes unfolding unraveling moving around you can study them but your first step is to get the, the, the balance so you're not tipping over into into what your mind is doing entangling with it uh, speculating about it just quiet witnessing, particularly noticing, you know, as you maintain that sense of non-engagement, these phenomena, moods, emotions, they tend to swell and recede. You want to sense that sense of the, when the emotion recedes or passes, lingering, from the intensity down to as it moves to the less intense before picking up again rather like the waves of the sea you have the wave and then the trough and moving down the back of the wave waiting for it to pass through and then the, the wave in the declining of that wave Notice the, the feeling and the chitta sort of expanding and feeling more spacious as the wave passes through, less occupied. Get interested in that process. The chitta, the awareness sort of expands or becomes more spacious as the phenomena recede even if it's just for a few seconds. The more you get interested in it, the more that um, experience of spaciousness will increase. It's the nature of chitta, what you put your attention on to becomes the dominant feature. It's very helpful for getting a dispassionate handling of these karmic personal, domestic issues and topics. Mm. It becomes more available for you. As if you can, what is that quiet open, openness? Getting interested in that more fully. Notice what's present, what's absent. There's certainly awareness, quite focused, it's not dreamy, it's quite firm. Lingering, lingering that, you'll, you'll find a kind of quiet, quiet happiness, quiet happiness.
but be more interested in the span, right? the sense of space, the openness. the firmness.
as you uh, review what's arising and passing for you, what's moving through. It may be that uh, questions about that or about the process or, you know, of this way of seeing things arises. And then by all means you can take your time, formulate a few words, put it in the chat box. Uh, so just to mention that this is a, uh, this is a last of these occasions. There'll be an occasion later on today, which will be evening for some and actually night for others. Um, so, so I wanted to have this morning occasion um, for people who find it difficult for obvious reasons to attend a night session. Um, so this is particularly, of course, the, the friends in uh, Far East Asia, Australia. Yeah. And thank you for making the effort to tune in. There's also some instructions. Uh, one of the treat managers has written out some instructions for the closing period of time. Um, so take a look at that. It should be somewhere in this mysterious uh, communication channel, there should be a notifications of the you know, procedures. And the intention is that, you know, a little bit of effort, most of us can reach what will be my five UK, five o'clock in the morning tomorrow, which will be, um, I think, early evening in in far, far east and uh, five or six in the morning in europe five five or six in the morning in africa and um nine or so in the evening in the west coast of america so most of us can reach that if we're not in the middle if you're not in the middle of the atlantic or in central asia which we don't have anybody from Kyrgyzstan attending, so that's not a problem. So that'd be um, 5 a.m. tomorrow, UK time as we our closing session. Hopefully we can all gather then. So let's take some questions. Hmm. So, Maybe I'll start from the bottom today. <laughs> oh. Is Jitter able to verbalize or understand words and what is its role in nightmares? Jitter mm -hmm. understands meanings rather than words themselves. So words are just either sounds, if you hear them, or little squiggles, if you see them. Mm. Jitter doesn't really understand that. It does understand uh, the meanings that, um, the, that get evoked through those words and sounds. Evoked is the right term because um, you know, it's the, the evocation is often can be quite personal. What, what when I say the word like um, you know, um, rat, <laughs> what that means to you. Yeah. Not the or dog. Yeah, or government. <laughs> or you know, various things can be quite evocative. So the word can mean have different nuances of different people, and that's what the jitter gets, its own nuances. The nuances of the meanings. Nightmares are often seem to me basically this the jitta um, as it's as it's rolling it's a kind of rolling on experience it's always moving vibrant and rolling on through its karmic web like a spider running around on, a, on its web constantly the web is moving in the breeze and the spider rushes around on this web 
maybe there's a fly there, maybe it's just the wind, it's kind of rushing around. Uh, so when it is, so it's just moving around, it sometimes hits into anxiety patterns and throws up images of anxiety or fear. So it's rather like this, this is all. You know, so don't take them too literally, though they might have some significance. The chitta is expressing its, its fears, dread in terms of nightmares. Are there many differences between fetters and hindrances? Why can't hindrances be combined to fetters? Well, well they are really. The hindrances refer to more, <coughs> um, you know, these are things like ill will and um, biapada, ill will, and karma raga, sense desire, uh, dullness, sloth, torpor, means a sluggish, apathetic mind and um, restlessness and um, speculative doubt and these are kind of hindrances that arise in the mind and blemish it um, fetters are much more to do with more deeply residual locks so hindrances can arise and pass if you're wrong it doesn't mean you don't have won't come back again yeah. So there's a difference between the hindrance of ill will and the, and the fetter of irritability, patiga. It means right now you're not experiencing any, any, any ill will because nobody's bothering you, but you may still have the tendency towards getting irritated. So that's a fetter. So someone who is um, 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 deeply developed in the path doesn't have the potential to get irritated. Is cultivating bhavana or kanti the best way to burn off our defilements? I found having kanti to those we don't like is very difficult. It is indeed. Well, developing kanti is bhavana. It's a cultivation, important cultivation. And the way to um, uh, why it burns, <laughs> burns off your defilements, could stop, first of all, it stops you reacting to your, the, that sense of, of irritation. So that means you don't, if you keep reacting to it, you'll increase its strength. If you don't react to it, you will decrease its strength. And you'll see how uncomfortable it is to be irritable. So you think, oh, what am I going to do about this? I mean, this person is annoying and stupid and petty and da 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 da. But why, does it have to, why do I have to get into this unpleasant state with it? So you focus back on that irritability. And you notice actually it's when I when I notice particular aspects of this person behavior now if I notice the ears I don't get irritated if I notice if I think of them going to sleep I don't feel irritated if I think of being them being sick I feel right rather concerned if I if I think of them being in pain maybe I feel a little bit of compassion so it's only certain aspects that you're reacting to, not, not the person, but particular actions. Or, and these actions give rise to perceptions. So the actions, person's actions or behavior. And why? Why does it bother you if somebody's that way? Why does it bother you? Because you get involved, you feel they're, they're, made small, dominated, bullied, rejected, you know, somebody's using you badly, wasting your time, and so on. Well, that's the bit you have to work with. Yeah. Yeah. Just withdrawing your engagement from that per from those actions. Just, just hear the voice as sound. The actions are just actions arising. Yeah. That's, that's practice. And you can feel that place in your heart where it gets prickly and raw and agitated and just step back and practice calming that place in your, in your heart. Uh, so if other people are unpleasant, and for sure people can be extremely unpleasant, you won't find a world in which there aren't unpleasant people. But you could find a mind which is not irritable, irritated by it. That's practice. 
person a lot of pain in the body move a lot during sitting so the energy flow gets disturbed well you could do walking um, so that the energy flow is flowing smoothly that would help you can do chanting so energy flow goes into the sound that would help um, you could do sweeping your body bring attention up and down your body that would help you could do moving slowly rather than keep fidgeting that would make it smoother you could do standing qigong that would probably help particularly movement would help um, those would be helpful advice on cultivating metta loving kindness so i can bring up kindness to myself when i notice the inner critic but metta in meditation i can't seem to make it work i think that's the problem i'm making it work i think you're right there uh, um, yeah i i sympathize with this uh, it's that trying to do meta uh, rather than just not be averse to what's going on or recognize aversion to what's going on and keep relaxing it uh, and meta kindness is best induced by, by bringing up an image in your mind something that you feel a nat heart naturally opens towards mm. yeah, so you, even if it's just mm, dog dog friend so forth mm. it doesn't have to be fantastic just a sense of heart opening uh, and then experience the something that wishes to contact that uh, in a in a in a warm way and get a feel for that what that state of mind is like and also the space that it opens up one is less um, internalized less self more mutualized more and that feels a more comfortable space to to occupy mm -hmm. Is, you see what I mean? It feels like I no longer feel quite so much just closed into me. Meta helps to open that space. I rather like when the mind acquires it, the heart acquires a slightly different shape, you might say. It's, it's wider, broader, and slightly different um, texture, feeling to it. It's sort of. Uh, abundant is the word means it's certain certain it's rather than searching for trying to pull something in it's sort of lightly flowing out in a in a in a, in a and that feels feels uh, better more useful and uh, then you notice certain uh, negative tendencies are not occurring and dwelling in that more often doesn't have to be that fantastic. It doesn't even really about helping people. It doesn't mean about doing anything. It's just about feeling a bit wider and more open and more expanded. And as the chitta gets to feel that, <laughs> so you can almost treat your chitta like it's a, like it's a you know a creature. As it gets to know that space, it doesn't want to go back into its little cramped state. It sort of stays in that in that wider, more spacious setting. Uh, um, and there's a natural then, when phenomena arise, you get less aversion, less retraction, less agitation, less worry, less fear. So it's a kind of sphere. It's called the sphere of the beautiful. Mm -hmm. So it may not necessarily be all the time it's kind of giving out a strong inclination it becomes a spacious uncontracted state 
And so you shouldn't try to pump it out. <laughs> Just touch the jitta with. Uh, she didn't have that was what she did was very nice. She didn't have to do that. You know, she didn't have to say that pleasant thing. He didn't have to give me that. They were courteous. They were they were they were trying to make things better for me. And people do this a lot. People touch a lot with some gestures of you know respect or goodwill. Of course, it's unpleasant stuff too, but people do because they like it. And you just but do you notice it? Um, notice it in tiny acts in the day where someone you know inclines your way in a, in a positive dire positive direction I mean, it's just the you know smile at you and say thanks so that the increased receptivity and this is this is the natural domain of the balanced human is the metta goodwill Without this, there can't be any real communication. So it's not just a special one-off gift for a special person. It's, it's a standard for how you can relate to people. You know, without, basically, it's not so much you're pumping out good intentions, it's just you don't have this sense of flat and negative, you know, well, you know, Fearing, fearing their hostility. So human contact can be marred by this sense of warding off potential hostility. <laughs> or they don't really like me, or if I do this, she's going to give me a hard time. You know, that, that fearful negative state of assuming one is not welcome or not liked and then trying to compensate for it. So, you know, we can clean that out, we're not apologizing for our existence, we're, you know, then this we'd say is, is the general domain of the realm of goodwill. Alternate healing methods like bark flower remedies. I don't know, actually. Never really um, investigated it. But uh, I know that you know pharmaceutical industry. One can have some suspicion about uh, medication, but um, I'm not in a way to to um, comment on that. Startled out of the body when the bell rings, or they get disturbed. What could be going on? It seems one is sensitive. Chitta is sensitive to sense impact. Naturally, when sound like a bell is a very sharp, um, commanding tone to it, it does penetrate. I tend to use it sparingly. Uh, I much prefer using my voice to indicate closing of a session, though it does vary, just because of the sudden sharpness of it. But it um, And, you know, there is a jolt and that's kind of what the bells are for to give you a small jolt uh, so when you hear that feel the feeling and first thing is just to acknowledge that and then return to the body stabilize in other words don't really got to jump up and do something Ancestral exclusions for some, there have been ancestral seclusions for some family members. If I have been one of the excluded family members, should I locate this exclusion in the body and then investigate? Yes, I would recommend that 
um, basically the experience, the experience of feeling left out, uh, which I imagine everyone has sometime or another. Uh, is it, uh, so in, once you're in a group, once you're in a group, then this experience of being excluded from the group. <laughs> because, uh, you, know, you know, if you have a group of 10 people, not everybody's on exactly the same page all the time. And uh, two or three of those might be, and they're, having, they're bonding well, and other people are kind of okay. And, they, you know, so, so the sense of there being everybody feeling completely included is not usual. It would actually take, it takes quite a lot of, quite a lot of work uh, to, um, to, to experience that. Uh, practice with with groups it's the nature of the mind is shifting 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 it's like kind of vibrating orbs moving around the karmic spheres sort of sliding in touch and sometimes they get in touch and they really bond and other times they don't and um, it may be that one of the mm, one of the um, let's say illusions Perhaps, but one of the you know, illusions about group is that there is such a thing. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an expression, but uh, the bonding in that is variable. And I live in, I've lived in communities now for 40, 45 years. And uh, my sense is the bonding can be quite strong on occasions. But, uh, but probably not, not that strong. Other times, just there, there isn't. I mean, we're all inhabiting the same area, but there's not a lot of deep bonding going on, even in a monastic community where everyone's seemingly doing the same thing, keeping the same precepts, you know, we're wearing the same clothes, going to the same routines. But actually, pretty much, you know, people are off their own spaces, um, and sometimes there's festering dissent, dissent or indifference, or some which is just not on the same wavelength. And when you see it happen in, in a situation such as this, when there is the same place, same religion, same, and, you know, and it still doesn't bond, you know, oh, you think, well, actually, maybe that's the way it is. Bonding isn't that uh, uh, full. You know, it doesn't, it's just maybe that's the way it is. And uh, it can occur in times and it can occur more often with some people. Uh, that's great. Uh, it, but one shouldn't see that as the standard. One should feel very pleased if there is that capacity to some degree or to a, to a great degree with a few people. That's wonderful. Now family, particularly, um, you know, uh, it's like, they're of different ages. They've got different karma. You know, I say in a monastery, the karmic confluence is greater. We are all actually kind of looking in the same script in a way, family, not really. Going in completely different directions. Now, as the feeling excluded, it may be the one just doesn't have much in common, which, you know, it's a little disappointing, but that's wake up, you know. Or it can, you can feel actually you've been deliberately shoved out through some scheme. Or, or plan, uh, and then you have to realize, well, what does this word family mean? Maybe this, this person isn't really my brother, you know, actually. And there's poignant, naturally, separate, because this is, this is the big um, poignant place 
or the poignant mark separation is the, and exclusion is in some form or another the most common form of emotional pain um, first noble truth but so rather than particularizing it this is me and that's them this is common it's a common feature of personal life personal life common feature of it and you can't push it together uh, so but you can always be what you can is it sort of embrace the dilemma with a mind of compassion let's, let, let's not get upset angry worried it's like this now and it can be that equanimous realization of um, limitations of personal life and family is often about personal life rather than um, transcendent okay a few more popped in how important is it to understand the workings of the mind from the detailed Abhidhamma perspective versus the contemplation of the four foundations of mindfulness towards realizing non-self. Yeah. Well, matter of, pers matter of perspective, I think it depends on what you mean by understand. You, you know, you can get the idea uh, from Abhidharma, but you don't get the experience of it. You don't, it's not, it's not about direct experience. It's trying to put out, present maps of direct experience, but to really uh, fathom, penetrate the workings of the mind, you have to do meditation. Abhidharma may help to give you some pointers. But um, I haven't found it, I haven't used it much myself uh, uh, because I find it, it may, it's too, too intricate and too heady for me. Well, I, the general idea of, uh, of uh, the mind not being a, a you know, the mental process is not, it's not being a single thing, which is the radical thrust and the meaning of the Abhidharma is there's no such thing as a thing it's just this constant interweaving of factors but um, that's extremely intricate and refined but we might notice as a meditation practice you know when a mind state arises what accompanies it is it accompanied if a thought arises it accompanied by a negative mood positive mood is it accompanied by mindfulness is it accompanied by delusion so yeah this that and that maybe gives you a sense of well you know what's keeping things running but uh, dhamma vijaya if you're cultivating the four establishments of mindfulness then for awakening the bojanga the awakening factors you have sati and then dhamma vijaya which is investigation you explore and or uh, these ex mental stuff as it rises words and topic words and theories have their drawbacks and we can be just thinking things through or trying to see something we aren't seeing just because it says it's that way in the book and maybe it is but it's not you're not experiencing it and so you're trying to force yourself to experience something that isn't evident for you then that's uh, that's unprofitable should be about accessing the solar plexus during our sitting practice it's part of your body and it's uh, associated with uh, willpower um, so it's good to relax it 
that may be through <clears throat> bringing your attention from that area where the, so we call the solar plexus and sweeping it down the sides towards the back. So you trace along the rim of the diaphragm down into your lumbar spine, smoothing and steadying, smoothing out from the solar plexus. Don't, if you focus on it, you'll increase the energy there and it'll probably tighten up. So keep sweeping your attention away from areas that feel too tight. And expand, you don't need willpower. If you find yourself getting willful, you can feel the effect on your lower spine as a tugging in the vertebrae tighten up. And this is uh, uh, not conducive. In the meditation at the beginning, we were touching into more open spaciousness. You suggested various qualities we might find in that spaciousness, including happiness and firmness. I found it hard to find a sense of firmness in that spaciousness. When I introduced the idea of firmness, jitter seemed to collect more within the energy body, the sense of vast openness diminished. Any suggestions? Mm. I think if you linger in the, the sense of the, what I call the happiness, which you seem to you don't mention, but uh, if you linger in the if you do if you do get a sense of it's a subtle ease, you might say, an ease and no pressure. Mm. If you linger in that quality of no pressure. Uh, it becomes established and uh, it's more than just an emotional movement it's a somatic mm. Mm. it means the energy system of your body is pretty uh, opened and, and established in that in that openness. You see, so normally the, the somatic system is sort of shifting around according to the fluctuations of the moods, or it can become quite hard and rigid. When we're driving towards something, trying to find something, it tends to become rigid. But when we experience and enjoy and receive and don't question the quality of ease and slowly you can experience i experience a kind of steadying in that a steadying in it settling into it and trusting in it and that all those qualities give rise to a, a firming up I mean, they, if you like, the residues build up to the somatic, to the body, inner body becomes quite settled. And open at the same time. If you like, the firmness acts as the frame around the openness. If the firmness is if we search for the firmness, you put it into the center so things close down. You see what I mean? If you're looking for firmness, then looking always takes you into the into the center of something. That's the way that the looking for focus is a funnel channeling in. So that means it, it, it will cause things to, to lose that openness. But there's enjoying is more open deeply receptive and so it causes the, the chittas 
to become wider. Now, if that if that sense of subtle enjoyment is allowed, lingered in, not dropped, not it builds up till that becomes uh, an established uh, firm place. It's not like that all the time, but it, you, you can, you, over time that can be the case, the more you get used to it. But <laughs> just notice what finding and searching does. So it's like that, you know, and so then they, most things must close down because you it's, what, it's what's happening. Person is a musician, I find it difficult to give up music. I'm torn between music and meditation. <laughs> yeah. Keep, keep meditating and uh, chanting and, uh, and make it enjoyable. Mm. Um, I used to have lots of music, a big collection of music. Uh, I used to play music, listen to music pretty much all day or most of the day. So my system was very much um, attuned to that experience, attuned, I still talk about attuned a bit, you know, because it's so fundamental. Uh, when I experience things, I experience things sonorously. Uh, and then I, so when I started practicing meditation in, when I was in Thailand, there, was, there wasn't any music, it just wasn't. So my mind would rehearse all these songs and music more or less all the time <laughs> and after a while I kind of got a bit fed up with it it's going on yeah. and then when I came back to Britain then I visited some of my music collection and strangely enough it sounded raucous <laughs> After, you know, after three or four years of withdrawal and meditation, the music didn't sound a bit like being pushed around. You know, like the music was pushing my chitta into this and that, like, you know, the song would try to push my chitta one way or the, you know, the, you feel you've been led along by it, you know, led, dragged along by it, which is what I liked, you know, being led along, get me out of difficult, into a happy mood. But then after meditation practice, it didn't want to be led along. He said, oh, you know, I just sit with this. It didn't want to be led by the, by the sounds. So it became much easier to, to um, let it go. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not, this is just a, an anecdote. It's not an, an advice. But if you meditate more, you get to enjoy it more, you might find your your tastes change, but of course, if you are a musician, um, you know you may listen. You may, if you need, if you need to make music, or you as a, as a way of life, for example, you might find yeah. But you're more discerning. I know people who've been in rock bands and who've just eventually <laughs> given up because they just wanted some peace and quiet <laughs> after a while. <laughs> You know, so if it if it does that, you may you may very well do that. <clears throat> okay, so thank you. We've come to the end of the questions for today, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so let's um uh, take a few moments settling. So what other people have asked may have meant something to you. Uh, just being able to ask may have meant some, something you think, well, maybe you know, about that. Just, just to, you know, maybe I didn't quite get the right answer for you. Um, but if it's if it's meant something, you can turn it over. 
um, review what you review your question yourself. It may not be I've answered it, but I've responded, and that may help you to answer it. Like what I really meant was, oh no, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's take a few moments in silence just to let things settle and absorb what this session has brought up. Okay, so uh, hope you can um, continue to cultivate um, in the rest of this day, and we'll meet again in the evening, actually the afternoon, afternoon. <laughs>